Hey guys, welcome back. So now starting our talks about Absolute Carnage, which is making its pacings to be an absolute bloodbath for the Marvel Universe. And so now starting our talks about this event, I wanted to break down a few things about how and why Carnage is such a formidable threat, and hopefully along the way, clear up some of the questions you guys have had about Carnage's godlike status. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week, and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so there's a couple points I want to hit first, like the whole ordeal with Null, the god of the symbiotes, then after that, the very unique connection that Carnage has with Null. And so the first thing I gotta say about Null is, Donny Cates, thank you. <laughs> because man, Null is awesome. And I've literally been buying everything that I could find Null in. So Donny Cates, thank you for that. It's, it's just good reading. <laughs> very much like anything that Donny Cates is involved in. But so now starting with Null, who is pretty much your owner of darkness. Because pretty much before the universe was built, he was already already here, the Celestials came in, they brought in light to his infinite darkness, and he wasn't necessarily feeling it. But since his revolt against the Celestials, we've been given quite the story thus far of his mission which began billions of years ago to restore the universe back to darkness, and I got links down below to catch you up and bring you up to speed about all of that. But with this history establishing Null as the owner of the Abyss, the original darkness, the infinite darkness, he's very much like your fallen god looking to return his kingdom back to its glory. And throughout his journey, this has given us the birth of the Necro Sword, the creation of the Symbiotes, but then his journey to restoring his kingdom had pretty much been put on hold after the Necro Sword was stolen from him and then the symbiotes he had soon after created had turned against him imprisoning him in a planet-sized gel by the name of Clintar. And so now the way that this ties back to Cletus Cassidy in a very unique way, which is a bit of new history which Donny Cates has brought in, but has done a very good job of giving us a better in-depth reason to why Carnage turned out being much different than Peter Parker or Eddie Brock with the Venom symbiote, because even then he was a serious problem. And this was one of those things like back at the time, like to me, it had me thinking like, okay, like why is the offspring of the Venom symbiote giving the original Venom symbiote and Spider-Man so much problems? Like you would think just the Venom symbiote alone being the parent, like it would just easily be able to take him out. But that's not the case. And the reason why is something that we touched on a bit back when we talked about Carnage Born. Because back at this time where Carnage was resurrected, shortly after his death, after the event of Venomized, we were given a much deeper look about one, how this wasn't his first rodeo with death, but also the explanation to why Cletus Cassidy has been like this serial killer pretty much from birth. Because as a child, when he died minutes after his birth, he had went to the abyss. And in this darkness, he would describe as a place of freedom, which soon ended after he was revived and quote unquote trapped within his mortal body. And it's for this reason all his life and even prior to the point of meeting Eddie Brock, he has always been able to see the world differently because to him mortal bodies are like prisons keeping every living person trapped and separated from the void. But the thing is freeing people from these bodies and sending them back to the void like here on earth we call that murder and as a reward for his efforts he was of course given multiple life sentences which is how in prison he met eddie brock and as i'm sure you guys already know upon eddie's escape cassidy had bonded with a piece of the venom symbiote which is how we got carnage as we would know him but underneath the surface of the symbiotic creation for cletus cassidy this was like confirmation of his lifelong purpose but at this point he hadn't fully been caught up to the connection to the abyss and the fuller understanding of null at least not until his more recent death at the conclusion of venomized to where if you guys remember when we talked about it, he was just floating out in space, but eventually when he fell through the Earth's atmosphere to where shortly after impact he died again, and though his body was originally collected by the Maker's Project Oversight, it wasn't too long after when he was abducted by this mysterious cult who wanted to use his corpse combined with a sample of the Grendel symbiote, and with putting the two together more or less create a new host for Null, and they believed that with doing so that Null would return them in this event called the Final Light, that Null would free all of them and return them to the Void with more or less this ideal of them having eternal life. And initially this did work as far as them using the Grendel symbiote to quicken the corpse of Cletus Cassidy and with doing so this connected Cletus Cassidy directly back to Noah with the Grendel symbiote having a more recent undisturbed connection which pretty much gave him the roadmap on how to free Noah by collecting each codex left behind from everyone who has ever worn a symbiote which from here started with Scorn. And I go much more into her history in a different video I'll leave that link down below as well because I also talked about a lot of that back when we talked about Carnage Born. But one of the main takeaways I want to emphasize at this point is that after he absorbed the codex from her because she was corrupted this then transformed your Cletus Cassidy who now pretty much has a Grendel symbiote but now in a more self-conscious state which is also visible as he changes back to his more traditional red giving him the strength and capabilities of the Grendel and more or less taking his place but with free will and so as far as everyone who's ever had a symbiote even after separation a codex is left woven within their DNA and Cassidy truly believes it's his divine purpose to collect every codex so he could release Null from the symbiote's 
who betrayed Null billions of years ago. And so now at this point, as far as Eddie Brock, who's still separated from the Venom symbiote and him discovering that he had a son named Dylan who was actually conceived back in Venom Center Takes All when Eddie used the Venom symbiote to save Anne Wayne, to whom later became She Venom, but we find out recently in Venom Volume 4 that not long after, she had mysteriously become pregnant, she had gave birth to Dylan, and as a result from being spooked from the whole experience, she then passed on Dylan to Eddie's father, Carl, and leading Dylan to believe for many years that Eddie Brock was just his older half-brother. But after a point in time of being kidnapped, kidnapped by the maker, Eddie discovers that his symbiote has been messing with his memories, which is what led him to go back home in spite of his painful memories with his father. But upon going back home, he discovered Dylan, and it was really from there that he had took Dylan from his father, mainly because Eddie knew that Dylan would be better off without Eddie's father Carl in any kind of circumstance. But even after discovering that Dylan was actually his son, he still allowed Dylan to just believe that they were only brothers. And at this point, Eddie's also aware of Cletus Cassidy's resurrection and all the details with the crazy cult that brought him back and he's also aware to an extent of what Carnage has been up to as far as collecting the different codexes and a lot of this he's really learned from the Venom symbiote who had been sniffing things out to where he had discovered Carnage had pretty much taken over the whole underground area that we had seen back in Venom Lethal Protector because now this area is pretty much where Carnage he set up shop to build his army to hunt down everybody who has a symbiote or who's ever had a symbiote and real quick like pretty much during this time while Carnage was building his army to hunt down everybody I'm pretty sure that this is like the explanation to why he wasn't really involved throughout the War of Realms. But also at the same time, it also gives us that explanation to Carnage coming back so heavy with Absolute Carnage. And it really jumps off with Eddie who's about to go look into this and with doing so, he wants to find a safe place for Dylan to lay low. But before he can, he already notices the signs of Cletus Cassidy closing in and doing things like framing him for murder in order to draw him out in the open. And it's not long before he spots Cassidy who gets real close. And when they take off, he more or less chases them down to subway and so now one of the biggest craziest things that i really want you guys to pay attention to is that this just isn't cletus cassidy with the carnage symbiote and it has much to do with the past events that we had just talked about and we'll go a little bit deeper into that in just a minute but when they get down into the subway cassidy catches eddie and dylan off guard pushing them in the way of an oncoming train and it's here with the venom symbiote who hasn't been that far behind them and at this point he's just been following dylan and eddie like in a disguise of sorts but he jumps down and protects them stopping them from getting mowed over by this oncoming coming subway train and albeit at this point with the symbiote bonding back with Eddie with everything that's gone on between the two of them recently Eddie would much rather stay separated but given the current situation a protecting Dylan let alone trying to stay alive his chances are much better operating as Venom than just Eddie Brock and so now the deal with Carnage who at this point even Venom really doesn't have a chance here because underneath all of this you have your undead Cletus Cassidy who has been given a piece of the Grendel to be a symbiote and even that's amped up with all the codexes that he's collected thus far from his return in Carnage Born and with however many codexes or codices he's collected to this point with the accumulation of each one he's only gotten stronger and stronger and in addition to that like underneath it all Cletus Cassidy isn't even like a man anymore and so when you take your undead Cletus Cassidy then you add the Grendel and then you put on top of that every codex that he's collected and you put that with the idea that since Carnage Born you pretty much have this unkillable Grendel plus powered undead Carnage who has made his ascension into godlike status and just going toe to toe like this is more than bad for Venom because like we talked about before Venom alone couldn't stop Carnage alone and as we've seen before Venom alone could not stop the Grendel alone so with that being said you can just forget about it in the case of this monstrosity but for Dylan's sake who's kind of watching all this happen on the side at the least Eddie needs to get him to safety because at this point there is no foreseeable way to stop this guy but there's an old trick that'll slow him down and it's a method that you probably want to leave to the God of Thunder. And since there's not a Thor available in the subway at this moment, Eddie just figures that that third rail is going to have to do, which once again won't kill Cassidy who's already dead, but as far as stopping him for long enough to allow them to get Dylan out of there, Lightning more or less versus Symbiote once again does the trick. But so now with Eddie making this decision and not really having much of a choice in the circumstance, this puts him out of it for a while, but with the Venom Symbiote taking over and more or less leading Eddie's body so they can get away from there until Eddie regains consciousness and doing this by more or less placing Eddie in a sort of coma so he could probably recover and when they arrive here and the Venom symbiote wakes Eddie back up we actually find out that the symbiote has brought the three of them to where they can get back up from Peter Parker and to where for Peter Eddie has a lot to catch him up on and there's been a lot of symbiote events but in my opinion with everything that's been building up so far none of them hold a candle to the potential threat of absolute carnage 
But that'll do it for this one guys. Hopefully now with us just getting into absolute carnage, I've cleared up and kind of answered some of you guys questions about how this whole carnage godhood thing works out. Because not only is it a case of him now being more powerful than ever before, but there's also the case of where Donny Cates has given us an explanation to the madness of Cletus Cassidy, which explains why now in absolute carnage, Cassidy truly believes that he's fulfilling his destiny by one, freeing everyone from their mortal prisons, but in addition to that, collecting the codex from every person who was paired with the symbiote so that Noah could be free once again. And like if I was Peter Parker hearing this for the first time, I'd just be like, well, I'm not saying that he's right, but everything does kind of add up. I mean, I'm just saying like, it makes sense. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.